What's going on, everybody? Hope everyone out there is having a great summer. We are now bringing you our first ever segment of a brand new segment. It's called The Summer Shift. It's presented by U.S. Steel. I'm Josh Getzoff. And, you know, they like to say start a new segment with a pretty good guest, a pretty big name. Uh, Kasperi Kapanen kind of checks the box. So, Cappy, welcome aboard. Welcome on to The Summer Shift. And great to have you. Thanks for having me. Uh, I feel pretty special and uh, I'm lucky to be here, be the first guest. So uh, let's, get, let's get it going. You, you said something that I just wanted to ask you uh, when you finished up your first season here, that you felt really comfortable and, and maybe more comfortable than you ever felt in your career coming to Pittsburgh again uh, and officially being a part of the Penguins, you know, for this past 2021 season. Why was that? Why were you able to had that comfort level after playing, you know, and beginning and having a lot of success in those first handful of seasons of your pro career in Toronto. Yeah, um, I'm not taking any anything away from Toronto. Um, that's not what I meant when I said that. I know some people, uh, you know, maybe took it the wrong way. Um, you know, I just want to clarify that my time there was unbelievable. And I met some amazing people that, you know, I'll be uh, life uh, lifelong friends with. And I enjoyed my time every second of it. Um, but I think just the way the season kind of played out for me with me coming in late and, um, you know, not going to lie, a little nervous, especially with, you know, coming in late and kind of feeling like, um, you know, I kind of let the team down or maybe I don't know how they think about me coming in late. And just a great group of guys just making me feel at home since the second I walked in. And, um, you know, everything from there kind of took off. I started playing well. Um, then got some chemistry and just kind of getting the vibe of uh, the organization. And it just felt like um, really special to me. That was probably the, the way I'd put it. Yeah, it definitely was a special first season for you. I think it's fair to say you clicked with your teammates on and off the ice. And uh, you mentioned your time in Toronto and how you know it was a positive for you. Uh, one thing that I think has jumped out to a lot of people since you coming on board here in Pittsburgh, aside from the hockey ability, is the fashion. And I know you had some teammates there in Toronto that have made some headlines. Like I'm thinking Austin Matthews, Willie Nylander, like those guys light up the camera when they walk into the building for a hockey game. Mm -hmm. uh, you clearly took some stuff out of their arsenal. Maybe you had some in your own. I don't know if you can see this picture back here, but I happened to, to frame your exit interview uh, attire. You got the, <laughs> the bucket hat with the sunglasses. Uh, what goes into the Kasperi Kapanen and fashion choices? Because, I mean, they're impressive. I got to be honest, I'm kind of jealous. I don't have the guts to wear some of the stuff that you put out there. It's impressive. Um, yeah, I think the suit game really kind of took off in, in Toronto. Um, you know, just spending a lot of time with the young guys and, you know, Maddie, Mitchie, Willie. Um, you got older guys kind of sprinkling stuff in there too. And it was, just, I feel, felt like everybody was kind of trying to compete with one another, which is kind of cool. Um, and I've always tried to look um, somewhat fashionable. I like fashion. Um, maybe not to the extent of, you know, what those guys are kind of doing, but I like to be within the trends a little bit. Um, and I think just a, a big key thing is to kind of um, look at some styles and just be kind of surfing the internet a little bit too. And then uh, probably the most important thing is, is just, you know, have the guts to do it. Like you said, you just got to do it and uh, not really care about what other people think. So um, for sure, I'm excited for next year and see uh, what I can bring to the team. I think it is awesome. Uh, the suits, the, the, uh, the looks that you have, they are cool. Uh, I don't mean that in a bad way. I really, I respect it. It's, it's from some guy that, as I said, doesn't have the guts to do it uh, to another that does a lot of respect there. Uh, are there any guys on this uh, Penguins team that people may not know have pretty good uh, style when it comes to getting into the rink? Because this past year especially, I feel like there wasn't as much of the, the vision of guys walking in as we've seen in past years with the access and everything. Yeah, I don't think um, our team really got or didn't get enough credit this year. There are a lot of guys that, you know, are fashionable. You know, everybody knows Tanger. Um, you know, Tanger's got some swag. I think, uh, you know, Jerry McCann's got some swag too. Um, you know, Tans has got some, Cody cc has got some, I know, you know, C's played with me in Toronto. So, um, there are some guys that, that like to dress up and, uh, haven't really gotten the recognition they, they deserve. You mentioned Brandon Tanev and I, I'm sure you probably thought at some point or another, he was going to come up in this conversation. <laughs> we all saw videos, Cappy. I mean, you put it out there on Instagram of you guys out there golfing, which looked like a, an amazing time, by the way. Uh, first of all, when it comes to Tanev, how did that relationship kind of take off? Did you know him coming to Pittsburgh? Was this a guy that you just became friendly with 
I know he's, or I think, originally from the Toronto area, right? Yeah, I think so. And, uh, you know, I played against him in uh, in Winnipeg or, you know, when he was playing for the AHL team. And, um, you know, it didn't really care too much <laughs> about him uh, back then. You know him. He's, uh, you know, kind of gets under your skin a little bit. And, you know, I played against him after that. And, um, but, you know, I think those are just the kind of guys that end up being the best guys um, on the team. And just, like, he's – a great energy and then you know i came to toronto and um you know it just kind of clicked and you know ever since then we've been uh we were trying to hang out with each other as much as we could and um like you said after the season he came down here for a bit and we try to kind of unwind and um play some golf and just hang out and uh you know he's a tremendous guy who, who was one of the the bigger guys that made me feel really at home so uh you know i gotta thank him for that I just have to ask, does he have uh, like kind of a happy Gilmore wind up when he drives, when he goes for his drives? He strikes me as a guy that's a little bonkers with that. Yeah, he would be the guy to do it. But I got to say he's uh, I don't want to admit it, but he is a pretty good golfer. He's got a good swing and he uh, he really nukes it with his drivers. So um, we'll see if he can give me a couple tips this summer. I want to stay with the uh, golf theme for you. I, I know, obviously, you are a big golfer. Uh, Obviously, you'd hope the season would go as long as it possibly can. But if you could give us an encapsulation of kind of a typical summer for you, how many rounds are you playing? How often are you getting out and playing golf in the summertime? Yeah, I mean, I'm down here. Um, you know, I got my place in West Palm. And, uh, you know, golf has been, uh, you know, I've gotten really into it the past three years or so. Um, a lot in Toronto, too. A lot of good players there. And we played a lot. Um so I live on a golf course too. So I'm trying to get out there at least once a day, maybe almost twice a day, um, get my workout done early in the morning. And after that, I kind of like to just go out there and just be outside and um, just unwind. So when you're playing golf, you don't really think about too much and you're enjoying it. And then sometimes you're not enjoying it, but um, I like the, the competitiveness about it. And it's uh, something I just try to do daily. Got a lot of golf fans in Pittsburgh, so I got a couple more for you, and then we'll move on. Uh, favorite course you've ever played, golfing wise? I was lucky enough to go and play Augusta probably two years ago during oh. All Star break. Yeah, so I was very blessed to go there with. Uh, I went with uh, Willie Nylander. I went with Jake Muzzin and Freddie Anderson. So we flew down there, and I got to play back to back days. So I played it twice dinner in between and just kind of hanging out at that facility and like that clubhouse. And, um, it's, it's, I don't really know how to describe it. It's probably one of the better days, um, you know, I've had in my life, just always watching the masters and then finally being able to be out there with some amazing friends and teammates and, um, enjoying it was, uh, was really special. Yeah, that I mean, that's probably as unique as you could get as far as a yeah. experience. Have you gotten around to the Pittsburgh courses at all? Is there a favorite here? Or have you been too busy with the hockey thing? Yeah, I mean, during the season, don't really have any time. Um, and that's fine. I mean, I can I can take a rest, take a break from golf, but right. um, just a couple courses. But I'd love to try out some of the uh, the bigger courses like Oakmont and, the, and uh, you know, the nicer ones around this area, too. So I'm hoping, uh, you know, Tans and, and these guys can take me out one day. Everyone uh, who is big on golf, I think, finished up watching the match in the last couple of days. Uh, I assume you probably had some kind of interest in it with uh, Tom Brady and Phil Mickelson, Aaron Rodgers and, and uh, Bryson DeChambeau. Uh, if you were in the match, if Kasperi Kapanen was the pro athlete that wasn't the golfer, who would you be paired with golf wise? Who would you want to be paired with in that kind of a situation? I mean, I think Tiger is pretty a pretty obvious pick to to have. I think that would be pretty cool. Um, but to be honest, like right now, if I had to pick, I think I'd probably want to play with my favorite golfer, which is uh, John Rom. I think he's you know he's Spanish. He's got that fire. Um, I love the way he plays. I love the way he swings, and uh, I think he's been on a tear lately. And uh, I think he's starting to get the recognition he deserves. I think he's you know one of the better players in the world. So. I think uh, me and Rambo would be uh, pretty deadly. I know when it comes time for some of the big major tournaments, I ask a lot of our broadcasters, Bob Arry and Phil Bork, 
who are big into golf, uh, who some of the names are to watch. John Rahm came up quite a bit this year, so mm -hmm. uh, they're on board with you on that front. But you described yeah. it with a couple of adjectives there, and I'm going to kind of transition from the golfers to your teammates. I'm going to throw a few names at you, and I want the first words that come to mind here, if you could do that for me. We're going to play this quick little game. There's going to be a, a continuation of this a little bit later on in our conversation, but as far as your teammates are concerned, let's start with Jared McCann. Uh, serious would be my first first adjective about him. He uh, he takes everything seriously. He's a pro, and I think he had a phenomenal year this year. Jake Gensel, funny, goofy almost. See, so yeah, whenever I think of Gensel, he's always laughing. He's always smiling. Um, you never see him in a bad mood, really. So that would be my way to describe him. Mike Sullivan. Oof. Uh, I'll go next. I'm a little scared to answer that one. <laughs> <laughs> so be careful there. Um, yeah. Pass on that. Uh, how about Brandon Tanner? That would probably be fiery or intense, um, which, you know, I love. And I think it's uh, he's a key player to our team, and uh, we really uh, love the what he does for us. When I've watched a lot of uh, games in the past, some of the, the rivalries on the ice have been pretty fun to watch and guys that are from the same country or, you know, the same region and speak similar languages. Like, for example, Penguins Capitals matchups and, and you know, some of the classic playoff matchups. You've seen Ovechkin and Malkin ma mouthing at each other in Russian. We have no idea what they're saying. Do you bring the finish out there to throw guys off their game a little bit if they really uh, get under your skin or do you keep everything English? I mean, with Finnish guys, I'll speak Finnish, but I'm not, I'm not that big of a trash talker. And if I'm saying something, it's, uh, it's more that it just kind of, uh, just a quick little joke, trying to mess with them. But us Finnish players, we, we don't really have that kind of uh, rivalry going, or at least I don't have with anybody yet. So uh, hopefully, it stays uh, nice and clean. All right, I'm gonna put you on the spot here a little bit. Uh, as you know, I, I call the games for the Penguins on the radio. I have no idea how to speak Spanish. So if I were going to say Kasperi Kapanen shoots and scores, how would I say that? Kasperi Kapanen ampu ja tekee maalin. Kasperi Kapanen ampu ette... Ampu ja tekee maalin. Ampu ja tekee maalin. Hey, but remember this. I'm not like, I know Finnish, whatever, but like, I'm sure like my pronunciation and even like, it's not great either but at least you get the yeah. gist of what, what you should be saying so i probably just said something that you know like that could be a little misinterpreted we'll take yeah it. maybe we'll, we'll take it that's fine. all right fair enough um all right one more thing for me and then we're going to jump to some questions from the fans i had this come up a couple days ago when i was with some family and i thought it was a good idea we were playing a game where you're on spotify and everyone had to pick a song but you had to pick a song from your first album that you ever owned so if I could take you back and you could, since we don't have Spotify or disposal, and I know you're a really outgoing guy, if you could just hum it for me, if you could give me that song so I could guess it. And my repertoire uh, of music is not great, so you might have a struggle here, but I'm just I'm wondering trying to... do that. <laughs> it's a tough one. You're never going to get it. I was going to say, I was just going to let you keep going until I... No, it's... Um, uh, I'm I'm pretty sure this is my first one. My dad got it for me. It was uh, Green Day. Green Day, an American Idiot. So that was okay. probably like the first song I ever listened to. And um, it's a lot of like, I think my dad liked it too. And whatever he played, I kind of listened to. And, you know, he got me to see these. So that's something that uh, came to me. Yeah, no, that was... I mean, Green Day is great. They still have some great yeah. songs. Oh, yeah. Awesome. And, uh, you know, now that you say that, I can kind of hear it in the humming. At first, I would have no mm -hmm. idea what you were saying, but it makes sense. Yeah. yeah. All right. So let's jump now to the fan questions. We got a ton of them. Um, Summer Olympics are coming up. So Jessica wants to know, what's your favorite Summer Olympic sport and why? Uh, wow. That's a good question, actually. I love everything, um, which is obviously not going to be my final answer, but – just watching Olympics in general, I think is it's really cool. Um, just something about the the hundred meter dash is it's very exciting, especially back in the day when you had Bolt and um, you know just the kind of specimen that he was and how he broke records was uh, was really cool to watch. 
definitely a fun one to watch. Uh, let's jump down to Noah and Dave, who first want to know, are you a gamer? Uh, I used to be back in the day more with Toronto and the guys played Fortnite and whatnot. But I think nowadays, it's like you can't even play Fortnite. Everybody's too good. Yeah. So um, I haven't been playing as much as I want to, but um, I'm thinking about getting back into it. So I'll kind of dovetail that to their mm -hmm. question, which was, who would be your go-to Mario Kart character if you had to play? Uh, oh, I'm going Yoshi every time. I'm going Yoshi, Mario Party, Mario Kart, uh, Smash Bros. I don't even know if he's on Smash Bros. But when, <laughs> if I get to play with Yoshi, I'm picking him. That's your guy? Yeah, that's my guy. Matty T wants to know, this is a good one. If you were arrested with no explanation, what would your friends and family think that you did? <laughs> I think it'd probably be something they'd probably think about like the movie old school where Frank the Tanks is streaking down the street and he's just no clothes. I feel like that would probably be their first uh their first thought, at least probably my mom's for some reason. I don't know why, but um something like that. And I think, yeah, like your your bucket hat here, it's green, so you could bring your green hat and have a great yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, now we got two more from the fans, and then we'll move on to a uh, final couple things. Uh, Terry wants to know, what's your favorite dessert or snack that you get in Pittsburgh? And then, obviously, do you like Jake Shakes? Jake Shakes? Um, no, I've actually never had one. Uh, oh. um, but, I, but, I, but I should, though. I should. Um, should. But for some reason, I've never really been a big dessert guy. I just, I can't really handle it. Like my body doesn't like it. It's like too sweet for me. But <laughs> the one ex the one exception I do have is is ice cream. I'll have a, I'll have like a sundae, like a, a vanilla ice cream with, uh, you know, chocolate sauce and whipped cream and a cherry on top. I'll, you know, I'll have that any day. All right. We're going to rock into some this or that right now. There's a ton of them. So just bear with me and give me your okay. answer. Uh, we're going to skip the cake or pie since you're not a dessert guy. Okay. So we will, we will begin with uh, beach, lake, or mountain vacation? Uh, beach. Roller coaster or Ferris wheel? Roller coaster. Pancakes or waffles? Ooh, that's a tough one. I'll go pancakes. Summer or winter? See, but you can't. That's, that's a tough I, one. I know. I like, I, like, I like all seasons, man. Like, I can't. I can't. Can't, I could never just live down here and just be in the sun all day, or I can't just be in the winter either. But if I had to pick, I'd probably pick summer. You need the four seasons to kind of appreciate each one, right? Yeah, exactly. Energy drink or coffee? Coffee. Hot coffee or iced coffee? Ooh. Uh, hot coffee. Bananas or blueberries? Blueberries. Flip flops or Crocs? <laughs> For some reason, I knew this one was coming. Uh, I've been I've been rocking my Crocs this year, so I'll go Crocs. All right, I respect that. Yeah. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Golf with Tanev or hockey with Tanev? <laughs> uh, both of them are pretty intense, but if I had to pick, I'd do hockey with Tanev. Tacos or spaghetti? Spaghetti. And last but not least, your playoff mustache or Yarmir Yager's mullet? Oh. I can grow a mean mustache, I think. I can't grow a beard, really. Uh, I can get a mustache for some reason, but it turns really red, and it's like doesn't look great, so I'd have to go with Yager's mullet. That's, that's pretty legendary. That, that is pretty legendary. I was about to say, I have no disrespect to your mustache, but... Yeah. That's, that's kind of in a class of its own. Yeah. All right, we got a, a few more things to round out here with, and then we're going to be all finished on this sh uh, summer shift. So first of all, uh, when it comes to you, Cappy, maybe off ice, on ice, anything, maybe not even related to hockey, is there a superstition that you have or that many that you have to try to get yourself prepared for whatever you need to do in a certain moment? Um, I don't think so, um, whether it's, you know, uh, getting ready for a game or just getting ready for a day like this. I don't, I don't really have anything. I try not to get into that stuff because, you know, I feel like eventually something's going to go wrong and then you, you're kind of going to get messed up. And, um, but there are some things like, um, I do before we go on the ice and, but I feel like everybody 
everybody has that, which is, you know, it's nothing special, but I try to stay away from that stuff. All right. So what's something that you can't live without or something of great significance that you possess? Uh, either my golf clubs or, uh, or my phone. I think, you know, with my family being on the other side of the world almost, I need to be able to communicate with them and, and uh, you know, talk to them and, um, you know, call them and, and uh, just kind of just be part of the world on, you know, social media and see what's going on. So probably my phone. That's, I mean, I'm probably the same way. I feel like yeah. we're to those things. Uh, for you, you're in Florida right now as we speak, but what are the plans this summer? Any vacation plans aside from that? Anything to unwind a little bit more? No, me and Tans had our vacation here, so no more no more vacays uh, for me. Um, going to go back home to see uh, friends and family. You know, I haven't seen them for six months now. Um, you know, that's a long time to kind of not see your mom and your siblings. Sure. Um, so I'm going to go back there for a bit. But um, other than that, be here, Pitt. Uh, might go to Toronto to see some old friends, but um, that's about it. Final two for you, Cappy, and then we're all set. Uh, give us one recommendation of something you're currently into. It could be a TV show, a book, a movie, a podcast, song, anything like that. Um, Movie-wise, just I love movies. So whatever you you guys are into, just I, I'm 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 into everything. I actually just watched like the, the last four James Bond movies in a row because those are my favorite ones. So if you guys haven't seen those, I, I recommend that. I'm waiting for the, 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 the newest one to come out, which has been delayed for like two years now. Right. So I've been waiting for it forever. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a little antsy to see that one. So they say like the, the absolute studs play James Bond, like Pierce Brosnan and Daniel Craig. Is, is there yeah. a penguin that could play James Bond or is there no one in that room that could fit that bill? I feel like somebody were to do it, it'd probably be Tanger. Just he's got that swag. He's he's got that calmness and he's got that cockiness in him. So I think he'd be perfect. <laughs> yeah, I had a feeling you were going that route. All right, last thing for you, Cappy. I do appreciate you taking the time with us. Um, I'm going to answer this question that you're going to tell me, which is, I need two truths and one lie about yourself. So you can throw them out there. You can think for a second if you need to, and I'll try to guess the uh, the lie. Um. Okay, and my, my actual first name is Samu. The other one would be, uh, I grew up using a lefty stick. And the third one would be, um, I'm allergic to broccoli. <laughs> I, like, I like pause there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that was that was a wild one. <laughs> to come yeah. up with. Hey, you're putting me on the spot today, though. You're giving me tough questions, man. Hey, you know, it, it, we're trying to get you right back into it. You only have two months in or so till training camp. We got to get the, the yeah. wheels turning again. Yeah, I get that. I know. Uh, let's see. Um, I'm going to guess. So, Samuel, I would think, would have something related to your dad, but I don't know if that would be your first name. I'm going to go with Kasperi. It's still your first name. Uh, I feel like being allergic to broccoli has got to be a lie. I've never met anyone in my life that's allergic to broccoli. Me either. I've never met. I don't know why I said broccoli. But Kasperi is actually my middle name, though. So, so I actually do, gave you two. So I gave you two lies. So you're keeping me on my toes. No. So I no. I said Sam was my first name. I said Sam was my first name. So yeah, that's the truth. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I was. Techn t yeah. Technically, it's my first name, but nobody's ever called me that. So. That's good to know. Yeah. That's good to know. So, so it's a little uh, something you don't know about me, I guess. Yeah, there you go. We learned something new today. We learned a few things about you, and especially that, thank God, you're not allergic to broccoli. I don't know what Chef Jeff would have done uh, going in the next season. If right. You're right. Broccoli. That would, have, that would have been pretty significant. Been but, Cappy, I, I really appreciate you taking this summer shift with me. It uh, means a lot. Wish you the best of luck this summer training. And I know in uh, – few short months we'll see you right back on the ice here in pittsburgh i think everyone's looking forward to it and uh best of luck and we'll talk to you soon thanks thanks for having me man appreciate it all right that is kasperi captain on the summer shift presented by u.s steel